Hi folks, my name's Ashley, I'm one of the founders of Skira and in this video I'm going to show you an introduction to using Construct 3's timeline feature. A timeline is essentially a sequence of changes over time and they're often used to create animations. So here's a really simple example. Uh, this is uh, the basic playback example from the start page and this plays a timeline which moves the sprite along uh, moving its uh, position and angle over time. So let's get started showing you how to make use of timelines. Uh, first of all, I'm going to create a new project. It's just going to be an empty new project. Um, and I'm going to add a sprite uh, to this layout. I've got one here, so I can just drag and drop in an image file. And I've got my little uh, piggy guy here. Let's make him a little bit smaller. Um, next up, I'm going to create a timeline. And that's done in the project bar. So you can see the timelines folder here and I'm just going to right click and select add timeline and I'm going to call that my timeline. There we go. Now uh, to edit this timeline I'm going to double click on it and this opens the timeline bar which is over here. And timelines uh, use a horizontal time ruler so it's good to um, give it a bit more space so to do that I'm just going to drag it over this uh, blue square at the bottom and that will dock it at the bottom and now I've got plenty of room along here for the timeline. As it says this timeline is currently empty there's nothing in it I need to add an object to the timeline to be able to control it um, over time. I've got my sprite here and the easiest way to do that is just drag it into the timeline and drop and that's added the uh, piggy sprite into the timeline and you can see it's added the X and Y um, coordinates as default um, they're called property tracks so I can change the position over time. Um, another thing worth noting is just a bit of terminology uh, this uh, where the name of the object appears here this row is called the track uh, and these are property tracks and in the track you have uh, you can just about see there is a master keyframe and on each property track is a property keyframe. So the master keyframes are where are the points in the timeline um, at certain times, and the property keyframes are the values to use at those times. There are also two markers to take note of here. The green line here is the end time of the timeline. You can also see that if you look at the total time property, so I'm just clicking on the name of the timeline here to show the timeline properties and that's the total time, so that's the length of the timeline. And you can also click and drag that to change that. And the red line is, it's, this is really the important marker, this is the current time uh, of the timeline, so this is used when editing the timeline as well, that's important for um, when you're adding in um, keyframes. So, uh, let's get started editing a timeline. The first thing to do is to enter edit mode. So normally the position of everything in the layout view here is how everything will look on startup or in on start of layout. Um, and if I move it around, this changes the initial layout of um, the initial the initial position of everything on the layout, I should say. Um, so to change things over time in a timeline, you first need to enter edit mode, which you can do by pressing this pencil button on the timeline toolbar and you can see it goes yellow this indicates you're changing its uh, position over time or its other properties perhaps so now I'm going to add a keyframe and there's uh, three things to do whenever you add a keyframe the first thing is you have to set the current time marker so I want to put this, uh, this chooses where my keyframe is going to go I'm going to set that at the one second mark Next, we need to set the properties that we want to set at that time. Um, when it's the position, I can simply drag this object, uh, my sprite, where I want it to go for at the one second time. And then I'm going to add some keyframes for that time. So I can right click and select timeline, set keyframes. Um, another way of doing that is pressing the S keyboard key um, as a shortcut. And you can see the uh, keyframes have appeared here. And that's now, those values will now take that, um, those values at that time in the timeline. So now uh, I can preview this timeline so far in the editor uh, by using the play button on the timeline bar. 
Note this is different to the preview project button. Uh, if you use that, you won't see anything happen at this time because we haven't got anything, or we haven't got any events which say to play the timeline. So if you play it using this one here, you'll be able to see what it looks like. And you can see the sprite move from A to B over one second. So that's our first um, our first keyframe that we've added to our timeline. Another thing worth mentioning, uh, normally when you set the current time, it doesn't update anything in the layout view. But if you hold down control and set the time, it scrubs. This is called scrubbing. And you can preview how the timeline looks at that particular point in time. So I'm just holding control there as I do that. That's very useful to know. So now I'm going to add some more keyframes. Um, let's just come up with a, uh, a simple movement around this layout. So don't forget the steps are set the current time, which I just did. Move the sprite there. And I'm going to press S on the keyboard this time. There we go. One, two, three. One, two, three. And one, two, three. And now if I play that, we can see the sprite moving along the predefined path that I've got in the layout view. And you can see here, you can just click and drag these points and visually edit the path that the sprite will take inside the layout view. Um, another useful feature of timelines, the ease function is very important. This is essentially how it gets from A to B over time. There's lots of different ease functions here. So for example, in out sinusoidal will do a sort of speed up and slow down movement in between each point of the timeline. Next up, I'm going to show you how to add a new property track. Um, suppose I want to animate a different property of the object over time other than the position, and I've, uh, I want to add this in after the fact. Um, so if I right click on the track here where the object name is and choose Add Properties, I can choose another property to add. I'm going, I'm going to use Angle uh, this time to be able to rotate the object as it plays through the timeline. Uh, also note, if you have a behavior or instance variables or effects on the object, uh, many of their properties will also appear here. So you can use the timeline to animate pretty much any kind of property available on the object. So now I've added the angle property, and you'll see there's a new angle property track has been added. And everywhere where there's a keyframe in the timeline so far, it's added a new property keyframe to set the angle at that point in time as well. Um, and so another way that you can edit uh, property keyframes is you can select them. And the properties bar is now showing pro uh, properties for just this angle keyframe here. And here you can change the value. Uh, so this is the angle that it will be at one second in the timeline. And I, if I set that to 90, so when it gets to here, it will have rotated 90 degrees. And if I play that, you'll be able to see it rotates. And then it rotates back again, because the next keyframe still has a value uh, of 0. So that will rotate back to vertical again. Um, so I'm just going to put in uh, some other angles. So at 3 seconds, it will be 180 degrees. 4 seconds, let's get a bit further around. And if I play that, you can see the angle changing as it plays through the timeline. <laughs> this pig guy is having fun flying around all over the layout there. So that's another way that you can add. Uh, it demonstrates how to show, um, excuse me, how to add another property which is animated in the timeline, and also another way of editing the um, uh, the values in keyframes over time. Now, I've been using this uh, timeline bar play button to preview the timeline in the editor. And if I preview the project, this is now at runtime. The game is running. And you can see nothing happens. And this is because we need to use events to start playback of a timeline. And to do that, first of all, I'm going to turn off editing mode because I don't need that anymore. And control of timelines is all done through the timeline object. 
So if I double click to add a new object type and um, where was it? There we go. In the general section, there's the timeline object. So this lets me control timelines in events. So that's added to the project. And now I'm going to switch to the event sheet and I want to play that timeline uh, on start of layout so it plays straight away. So I'm going to go and add a on start of layout event, which is in the system object. And I'm going to play the timeline as an action. So in the timeline object, I'm going to choose the play action. And there's only one timeline in the project so far. That's my timeline. And tags, um, I'm not going to set any because I don't need them right now. But this is a way to control playback of the timeline later on. For example, to pause or resume it. Um, it's a bit like tags in the audio object where you, it uses the same approach to control playback of sounds. But I don't need that, so I'm just going to click Done. And now when I preview the project, we can see the timeline playing as I designed it, but in the game. So there we go. That's all I'm going to cover in this video. That covers the basics of how to create a timeline uh, and uh, edit it within the editor, preview it, and then use the timeline object to play it in your game. Uh, this is a really powerful future. Uh, there's loads you can do with it. We're looking forward to seeing what everyone can come up with. Hopefully there are lots of creative possibilities you can think of. Uh, I'm just going to quickly highlight some other features um, while I'm here. So one feature is these are the master keyframes here. You can give them tags. So I could type in a tag here like, um, I don't know, um, event. <laughs> Uh, and I can add a event in the event sheet which says on keyframe reached and that will trigger when the timeline playback reaches that point. So this, uh, I'm not going to add any actions, but this event will trigger when playback reaches this point and you can see it's turned to a flag uh, in the timeline bar to show um, that there's a, a tag there. So this is a really useful way to sync up things like audio playback or sound effects or other interactive elements happening whilst your timeline plays. Uh, there's also support for uh, curves, so you can set the path mode to cubic bezier and when you edit, uh, you can now uh, design bezier curves so you get a nice curved playback of the position. So that's just uh, another feature to be aware of. Another thing is the uh, result mode. Um, you can set this to relative and it will use the starting properties of the object as opposed to these fixed positions in the layout view. Uh, so that, for example, will play this path from where the object starts as opposed to um, moving it to these exact positions. And finally, you can use the, the new move to behavior has a move along path action, which um, I'll show you in a different example. Uh, if you look up move along path, this uses the move along uh, timeline action. So this action says move along the timeline path. Uh, so it will take the position keyframes from this timeline path, which looks like this. Uh, this just moves around the layout. and. If I run that, you can see it uses the move to behavior has acceleration, turning, and uh, a maximum speed. So this means it's a more natural movement for an object because um, the speed is fixed between each point regardless of the distance. Whereas if I play that in the timeline bar, you'll see that the speed changes depending on how far away the points are, which is um, not always what you want. So that's quite a convenient way to set up something like an enemy patrol. So that's uh, everything I'm going to cover in this video. Um, we, I hope you enjoy using the future. Give it a go if you haven't tried it already. There's a written version of this tutorial available as well. And uh, it's all fully documented in the manual. So go and check that out. And I hope you enjoy using the future.